Hello and welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio. This is Kirk Spencer, your host. On Wednesday, the 15th of March, 2015, my guest was Ben Davidson of Suspicious Observers, or suspiciousobservers.org. I'll give you links to both his website and his YouTube channel in the description box below this YouTube video. We were doing a two-hour show, and we had a discussion about poll changes. And I learned a great deal about poll changes, and I'm only giving you an excerpt of what was spoken about during that interview. I don't want to give a two-hour interview, but it, uh, if you want to hear it uh, before the middle of May, you will be able to find it on Blog Talk Radio, or you can find it on our blog on kwave6radio.tk, which I'll put there as well. And you can just go to the title, which is Climate, What's New, and uh, you'll find out the rest of it there. There's the media player that is there. You can listen to it straight from our media player that's embedded into the blog, or you can go to Blog Talk Radio, or in May you'll be able to find the whole show uh, on our YouTube channel here. This one, this segment that I'm airing is just about, uh, well, the interview segment is about 15 minutes long. Uh, I took out, it came out in about 45 minutes and during the show and it went over our um, hour long break. So I took out what came before that part uh, that we were discussing about uh, the poll changes and uh, I took out the break and what came after that, uh, which was only about five minutes long, if that. But um, this is something I really believe that everyone should hear, so everyone should know. Uh, ben Davidson is a graduate um, meteorologist, and uh, he has what is called the Mobile Observatory Project. You can find out all about that on his website. But this little section here I thought I would share uh, even before we air the whole interview on YouTube and um, learn what even he says is the most important thing that we should understand. And it is not supposed to be meant to frighten anyone, but just make you aware of what's going on because there's a lot of people on YouTube and other places that don't give you the whole story. And Ben Davidson also has very good ties with NASA and scientists there and other places which he and his videos will always give you uh, his reference material so you can go see it for yourself. In other words, he's not making it up and it's not just his opinions. He has scientific data to back it up. Anyway, Without further ado, let me introduce you to Ben Davidson and our discussion on pole change for the Earth. You have some things about, as what, what is it, five reasons why a polar shift is imminent and you say is confirmed. So tell us about this uh, polar flip for Earth and for the Sun. Are they related, how so, and your indications? Okay, well, there's virtually oh, no connection. Wait. Yeah? Let me ask you real quick, because I, mean, I know I'm going to forget this, and I didn't write this down. You were saying in the videos that the North Pole is changing and moving, and in, in the video that you show, the South Pole is virtually just at a standstill. So you can incorporate all that together if you can. I absolutely will. Um, well, first of all, you asked about the sun, and there's virtually no connection between these two pole reversals. It happens on the sun every 11 years, so that um, you know begins a, an 11 year cycle at the north. It will be right back there 22 years later after uh, having been in the south for the second half of that 22 year period. So every 11 years they switch for a full cycle of 22 years. Now, of course that there's no kind of cyclical disaster on earth like that. Uh, and 
in, in general, the, the pole reversals of the sun are generally not linked to uh, anything catastrophic here on Earth. Now, the, cat the pole shifts on Earth, unfortunately, are related to catastrophic events here on Earth. And I'll basically run down where we are with this situation. So, our magnetic poles, and uh, those are different from the geographic poles, by the way. When you think of the North Pole and the South Pole, we think the very top and the very bottom. Um, but the magnetic poles are are almost never exactly on opposite sides of the planet, and they're almost never right on the actual geographic poles. They tend to migrate around a fair bit over time, a few kilometers a year this way, a few kilometers a year the other way. But recently, the north magnetic pole began speeding up very quickly. The south magnetic pole, um, well, I don't think I would describe it as being at a standstill. It is steadily tracking on a on a fairly fairly good line um, and it actually has left the continent of Antarctica. The south magnetic pole is actually not on the continent anymore. It is coming up in the Indian Ocean um, underneath Australia on a line that looks like it would just just miss the, the southwest part of Australia which is where uh, Perth is and, and uh, places like that. Now, the North Magnetic Pole is racing so fast that uh, at this rate, the notion of this taking hundreds or thousands of years uh, to do a flip has completely gone out the window because it's going so fast right now that in even just 100 years, this thing would flip multiple times. And so we know it only flips once, um, and we know that it has been speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. So even if it didn't speed up anymore, if it just kept at this pace, we couldn't have 100 years left. It would have to slow down significantly or change direction, which it hasn't done. And speaking of its direction, uh, the North Magnetic Pole was in Canada for quite a while, but then during this shift it began shooting north, uh, north-northwest, uh, breezed right past the north, uh, the geographic North Pole in the Arctic and is now actually heading down uh, to lower and lower latitudes uh, towards Siberia. Now, if you can picture this in your head, try to picture a map of the world. One pole coming down through Siberia, it's going to go through China, Mongolia, and come down through Indonesia. South Pole's coming up out of Antarctica, just barely going to miss Australia on the western side, the, the left side, if you're looking at a map. The poles are heading towards the same location, which is not at all what you'd expect if you can picture, uh, if you can picture the Earth with the North Pole and the South Pole. Now replace the Earth with a clock, so you've got the North Pole up at 12 and the South Pole down at 6. You would think that one pole would, you know, go 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the other one would stay on the opposite side of the planet, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and they would flip exactly. like that. That's what you would think would happen, but that's not what's happening. They're going to the exact same place. And the reason why that's so interesting is because Earth cannot have two poles in the exact same place. The other one would have to be just about on the opposite side of the planet, and if you take the op if you look at where the opposite side of the planet is from where these poles are going, it looks like it is somewhere in between the Bermuda Triangle and what's known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, which is a huge weak breach in our magnetic field. Uh, it's the weakest uh, weakest protection from energy from space uh, over anywhere in the world. Um, and so it's very interesting that we've got the Bermuda Triangle very, very close to this area, uh, the South Atlantic Anomaly, and it happens to be on the exact opposite side of the planet from the place where both poles are tracking right now. So that's very fascinating. Um, that was one, two, and three from that video you were talking about. Uh, did you have any questions or anything I didn't hit so far? I, I was going to do four and five next. <laughs> well, actually, uh you're talking about this, and what just went into my mind, and I wrote this note because I didn't know when I was going to get a chance to ask the question. Because you know, you know, I like to listen to whatever you're saying. Uh, if the poles coming together, because this is actually relating to something else that I had actually written earlier, but you're talking about the poles coming together, north and south, 
poles and they're coming towards the same area. They're looking like they're converging in the same area or want to converge in the same area. Is this or could it be a, a relationship to what's going on in the Western Pacific anyway? Because what I'm tying this to is, is like the movie The Day After Tomorrow with Dennis Quaid and where all the heat and you have all these hurricanes and cyclones that are coming together and they're cooling down the northern hemisphere. But we know that the western, well, actually Pacific, but western Pacific in particular, which is why we get so many or they get so many cyclones over in that area, it's very hot ocean. So I'm tying this together in trying not to talk too long about this, but uh, the Western Pacific seems to be the hot spot of the world at this point. And as you've talked about it in your videos quite often, is the Eastern U.S. is where all the cold spots are. And is this, could this be tied together? It's very possible. Um, I, I definitely wouldn't... Uh wouldn't say it's not possible. What I will tell you is that um, the place where both poles are heading, not only do you have that, that heat thing, but you know, you've know you got the Devil's Triangle or the Dragon's Triangle over there, which if you don't know, the Bermuda Triangle has one of these things on the opposite side of the planet as well. It's called the Devil's Triangle. It's a magnetic anomaly there as well. And um, not far away from that is actually the strongest part of the magnetic field over Earth, which is actually sitting just about over top of where the South Pole is now, south of Australia. And so you have this area where North and South Pole are set to meet, and it is sitting pretty much right in between the strongest magnetic field protection on the, in the world and the Devil's Triangle. Then on the opposite side of the planet, you basically sit between the Bermuda Triangle and the South Atlantic weak anomaly in the magnetic field. What we have here is a bunch of pieces that clearly have the same colors and shapes, so they're part of the same puzzle, but we're talking about major expert level, and I, don't, I can't even put the first two together from there. And um, based on the literature, nobody else can either. Um, this is not something that is really talked about. Um, there is n nobody that is denying that the poles are shifting. There is nobody denying that the magnetic field is weakening. They're just not talking about it and they're not well if they're if they're doing the kind of thought exercises and actually trying to figure out the answers uh, like we are right now they're not publicizing that part of it um, so this is what I just told you is basically um, not disputed and you know it's but but it's also kind of a stagnation point we don't really know what to do and it's it's not the kind of thing you can track day by day it's really only useful to look every couple of years to see how things are doing because there's so much fluctuation just night, day, hour to hour, even season to season. So, you know, it's not the kind of thing that you can track every day. Um, but, you know, if if anybody is listening to this and they're thinking right now, why should I care? Um, it's because these magnetic reversals on the planet Earth have been linked with extinction events pretty uh, pretty solidly, and a recent study from Berkeley proved that they can happen in as little as 80 years. Uh, most scientists thought that these things took hundreds or thousands of years, uh, which if you were looking at how fast the magnetic pole was moving, 60 or 70 kilometers a year, you know, and, and, and speeding up every year, that's not gonna take thousands of years to go halfway around the world. Um, but, you know, forget all of that. Berkeley just came out and officially, you know, gave their proper science explanation of why this can happen so quickly. And bear in mind, we're already 100 years into this one. So we are past the minimum time it could happen. It, this could take another 100 years. It could happen tomorrow. Nobody knows when it could happen. Mm -hmm. But um, th this would be the thing that I, I consider to be the number one most serious issue naturally uh, you know in terms of natural disasters that the world can face right now yeah I tend to agree matter of fact I didn't know that you uh, actually well the reason why I said the South Pole seemed to be virtually standing still 
I was looking at your video and it's like watching the North Pole. And I started watching the North Pole when I was a lot younger. I was actually lucky enough to have a teacher when I was in high school who was telling us North Pole is not actually what we call Geo North. It is actually in Canada, and back when I was in high school, it was lodged right there in north-central Canada, and it didn't yeah. actually move. And a few years ago, I used to tell people, I said, if you really want to see how the pole is changing, I said, take one of those uh, compasses that are, you know, I used to say plastic compasses, it's clear all the way through, glue it or stick it to your countertop and just watch the north ah, move. See? This this is this is where I'm going to tell you that doesn't work. Uh, okay. Because, because the the magnetic pole. Remember how I told yeah. you there's so much fluctuation day to day, month to month, season to season. The magnetic yeah. pole makes an 80 mile circle every single mm-hmm. day, and makes a 350 yeah. mile circle every single year, a larger circle. Which is why every six months you can find people saying, oh, my God, the pole has shifted 170 miles in the last six months. We're all about to die. Because Uh that's what it does every six months, and then it spends the next six months going back the other way. Now, there's a couple Uh of people on YouTube who have gotten into, who have basically been uh, calling doom day after doom day after doom day. Oh, yeah. 2009. It's a brilliant idea, and if you don't know about these circles, um, you know, th- that the pole makes, it's really, uh-huh. really tough. Um, but, I mean, uh, it, if you actually set it down there, you can see it moving basically hour to hour, day to day. And it's interesting, but you can't track the long-term pole movement that way, unfortunately, because it only gives you one vector. And so you, uh, if it's on a straight line, it could look like, you know, if it's moving directly away from you, it could be moving uh-huh. really, really quickly, but to you, it would look like it wasn't moving at all. Or, um, you know, it could be, you know, moving directly 90 degrees, you know, directly perpendicular to a line with you, and it would look like it was going pretty quickly, but it could just be sort of meandering across. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Yeah, I do. I do. and definitely yeah. do. Actually, right now we're going to take a two-minute break. And welcome back to K-Wave 6 Radio. Today my guest is Ben Davidson of Suspicious Observers. If you were here just before the break, now you understand why I have been come on to explain things because here I'm thinking you could put a compass on a tabletop and stick it there and watch the the uh, movement of the North Pole and wrong. Okay, anyway. So, well, I, you know, to be perfectly fair, the only reason I know is because I've made that mistake before. Um, uh, I couldn't figure out why my, why I was getting different readings than somebody, than a friend of mine in California. Mm-hmm. This is when I was uh, in Columbus, Ohio. So, you know, the angle from Columbus, Ohio uh, to the North Pole versus California to the North Pole yeah. is actually mm-hmm. significant enough where we were seeing different motions. Uh, He was seeing a lot of movement, but the pole was moving almost directly away from me. So even though it was moving, my compass needle didn't really change a whole lot, and I had virtually no movement. And so when I was doing my own experiments, I'm sitting here thinking, man, these guys are all full of crap. The pole's not going anywhere. But I I was wrong, and I made made that mistake definitively. Thank you for listening. This is the end of our segment on Earth's pole change. We hope you found this of value for your life for now and in the future. Keep abreast of our Earth and climate changes at suspiciousobservers.org and via Ben's YouTube channel. All links are listed below in the description section. Also, keep up with what's new at K-Wave 6 Radio at K-Wave 6 Radio. Dot TK. And as always, all the best. Mm-hmm.